We applied for New South Wales uh, QB3P and Rosenman Scholarship, which was a two-year opportunity to be in UCSF Rosenman and QB3 incubators in San Francisco. That was the time we had access to labs. We both were like ready to invent and we had access to all the facilities and we tweaked the technology and we changed the technology. We basically created a new platform. When we were there, we got the chance to actually build a world-class team. We had mentorship from entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley, in Bay Area, that gradually guided us towards our current advisors and board members. So our current advisors and board members are serial entrepreneurs. They complement what me and my co-founder are expert in. They've done it not once, a couple of times before they have taken technologies all the way from research to patients' body, merging to big companies. So when we were in the U.S., that was the time that we expanded the team to people who were complementing our skills, first on advisory and board level. And then we had our first hires, which was on quality management system. And we went from there and and then we started having more and more people. In. How did you get into the UC Berkeley QB3 Innovator? Because this is world class and you are in Australia and then you're from Iran. So how did you know about it? How did you network that? So I would give the credit fully to New South Wales Health, the department of OHMR. So it's a medical research department inside the New South Wales Health. And I know Neil herself, who is now the director of that part. So she was coming in person to a medical device commercialization course a couple of times. And they introduced the opportunity and they said they have this open position. We were the second team that had the opportunity to be sponsored by Australian government to be in that world-class incubators in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And when we were there, we were really proactive. So we kept networking. We were asking help from people who we knew have done it before. And then we have the same chemistry, like we can work together. So I had no hesitations to network with these people and understand how much they can add. Because when I was looking at myself, just the 2016 when I finished my PhD and then 2019 when I was in the U.S. in the incubators working on my own company, I was thinking how much I have learned in that three years. So I could imagine how much they know that I don't know during their 20, 25, 30 years of Mm. career. So I was really proactive in networking and getting people to refine my pitch there. They said to my pitch decks, people from Fogger King Studio, from Stanford Biodesign. I was just asking them to have a coffee. And then I was asking people in QB3 Curator, UCSF Rosenman, Kristen Winoto, the head of uh, UCSF Rosenman. I was asking her personally, can you please introduce me to this person or that person? And they were really kind and generous enough to spend time and do that just about asking so you don't get mm. it if you don't ask i was asking all the time when i was in cicada innovation taking the medical device commercialization course and then later before we go to the u.s there is also one missing part that i like to highlight so before going to u.s we were incubated as a company in cicada innovations as part of their med lab accelerating mm-hmm. program. So that was like about six months of program. So that's a game. That was the best time to network, find people, not only in Australia, but also in the US. And I was not asking money from anybody that I was meeting first, just asking for their advice. Mm-hmm. And then if they had money, I would ask like later on. Welcome to Multiple Hats, a show about STEM professionals who have gone off script and carved their own path beyond the tracks that were set for them. Science, technology, engineering, mathematics, medicine, how they found their why and what it takes to make it happen. 